Hi hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing some, uh, we're going to be basically upgrading the memory set, well, upgrading. We're going to increase the memory voltage on the R9-270X, and we're also going to be adding some extra capacitors, because that's what you do when you have a single phase voltage controller um, that runs at, where is it, 300 kilohertz, <laughs> right? So gonna we're, we're going to add some extra capacitors to it. We're also going to increase the output voltage. So at stock, this thing is configured to 1.5 volts, and we're just looking at the data sheet here because this is how we're going to mod the voltage, which uh, essentially is just this FB pin right here. So that's pin 6 relative to this dot. This dot is put on the diagram for orientation. You're going to find a similar dot on either the chip or there's going to be like a little indication on the PCB with like a more white corner at one side of the chip. Um, Anyway, that dot is for orientation, pin 6 is feedback, and if you want to know what that pin does, we go FB, da da da, search function is being stupid, so we're just going to scroll, <laughs> so, scroll down, now, yeah, output voltage selection. The output voltage can be programmed with a resistive divider. Use a 1% or better resistors for the resistive divider. That's if you actually care about having good accuracy. We don't really care. This is a memory rail. If it's off by a couple percent, nobody gives a damn. Um, the FB pin is the in uh, yeah, inverter input of the error amplifier, and the reference voltage is 0 0.8 volts. The output voltage is determined by, and this is the part you actually care about. Um, v out equals 0 0.8 times 1 plus R1 over R2. We don't actually care about what the values of R1 and R2 are. Basically what this equation tells us is if we re reduce because R1, uh, where R1 is the resistor connected from V out to feedback, so we're not going to mess with that one, and R2 is the resistor connected from feedback to ground. So essentially if we decrease the uh, resistance here, right, by, by say 10%, it's going to roughly by 10% increase our output voltage, which is what we're going for, because stock, the memory runs at 1.5 volts, and I want to bump it up to like 1.6, uh, well, 1.65 to maybe 1.7, which is again why I don't really care about using a like high accuracy resistor, because it's like if it's 1.66, we get more overclocking. If it's 1.63, we get less overclocking. It's not actually going to really affect the, the lifespan enough for me to give a damn. So, yeah, that's why we're just going to use a, you know, whatever cheap, uh, some cheap through-hole resistors for this. Um, they might be 1%. I don't know. I don't care. I didn't check. I'm pretty sure they aren't. Um, anyway, but yeah, if, if we just reduce the resistance from the feedback pin to ground by roughly 10%, we're going to get roughly 10% more voltage. If we do, you know, if we reduce the resistance by roughly 20%, we're going to get roughly... 20% more voltage. Like, you could actually solve that equation if you wanted to, right? But, um, yeah, um, that, that's the gist of things. And we are just going to use a resistor. If you actually wanted to have voltage control, you'd use a variable resistor. You'd use a potentiometer as a variable resistor to have voltage adjustment. But uh, I don't really feel like figuring out where to put more. Like, I don't feel like bothering with using a potentiometer on this thing. So that's kind of that. Um, so let's, let's move over to the work area, which I've forgotten which camera that is on, so give me a second. It's on this one. Bam! There's our card. So, um, this here is the 270X, of course. Um, is that laggy? No, it isn't. Cool. So I'm just going to turn on my soldering irons, all two of them. going to grab the hair dryer. Well, let's disassemble it. Um, and we will be using the hairdryer to heat the card up a bit. I'm not going to use the hot air because it's just, well, it would be faster, but if you want to copy this, the hairdryer is going to be probably more accessible than a hot air station. I would not recommend, well, I guess you could use a hot air gun. The main issue is that it would, like, main risk is that you'd, like, uh, overheat something, but anyway. Let's just pull those out. So that's that. We're also going to be adding uh, three of these capacitors right here. Will it focus? Too close? Yeah. Three of these. 
Um, these aren't necessarily the best capacitors I have for, for like volt bonding. It's just that I have a ton of these and I don't have anything to use them on. Well, it's like I don't want to use those on like actually good cards I care about. That's, that's basically it. So, um, you may notice that I have some notes on this card. So the MEM VRM is this right here, which is that right there, right? If we flip it over. Um, and I know that because I checked the voltage on these capacitors while this was running. It's 1.5 volts, so that's our memory VRM. That's what powers the memory chips. That's what we're going to be modding. Our voltage controller is this chip right here. And this chip over here is for that, uh, that right there, right? For this VRM down here, which is the memory controller rail or something like that. I don't really care. Um, so anyway, here we have our card. And I forgot to get my multimeter. So I'm going to go grab that. go. And pin 6 is our feedback pin. I'm going to see if we can zoom in on this enough that you can actually see what's going on. Ah, yeah. Oh, rotate it around. So there's our chip. That's, that's the one we're going to be dealing with right there. Um, let's see. Our orientation dot is up here, so pin 6 should be this pin down here. Um, now, if you're working on something more complex, like say a... Like if you were doing a si similar style voltage mod on a chip like this, I would recommend that you trace your pins out, so that you don't need to do a whole lot of very fine soldering. But this is huge, so we're going to just go right onto the pin of the actual controller, because that's really easy to do, even with... Not so great tools. And the stock resistance is 4 kilo ohms on pin 6. So if we put a 40k in parallel with that, then we'll get roughly 10% more voltage. But they don't make 40k. Well, you can buy 40ks, but I only have a 39k, so we're just going to use that as soon as I find one. Um, if we use like a 33k, then we get even more voltage. So there we go, that's a 39. Isn't it? Yeah. So. Actually, for this, eh, screw it, we'll hit it with the hairdryer. My hands are cold. There, and that'll just potentially, that should just make the soldering a little bit easier though. I don't really think that a chip that size would need that, but uh, anyway. Um, also we need a place to hook up to ground. And I don't necessarily want it super far away. Though that chip's going to have a ground pin on it, directly on it, so we could just use that. Um, there's a bunch of capacitors around here. Some of those got to be ground as well. And we're yeah, actually, you know what? We'll just zoom out. See, this, this is why I don't do soldering videos most of the time, because I can't keep track of what you can see and what I can see. <laughs> so um, actually, this is going to be super easy. That has to, that cap over there has to be ground, that side of it. I am correct about that. Oh, you can't see the multimeter. So. Well, you can see it, but I don't think you can read it. Can you? Yeah, you can. Okay, so that's zero, other than, you know, me wobbling the probes. Screw it, we're calling that zero. I don't have time for this. So zero to here. It's going to be... four K. And so that's it. And we're just going to... Throw our resistor in, and we can go... I mean, I could literally just do it with the wire from the resistor itself. But I'm not sure how uh, convenient that is. Also, where'd that go? I should have prepared for this better. Oh, well, we'll just use these to hold it in place.
That might not be the most convenient ground after all. Mm hmm. That's got to be 12 volts, though. I'll go in there. And I'll just go over the chip. We'll trim this down a bit. Trim that down as well. Are they seriously not here? I swear, I spell, whenever I'm doing soldering that's like not on camera, I probably spend more time looking for equipment than actually soldering, so... Yeah. Um, it says a lot about my organization. Yeah, that's nice. Pretty happy with how that's working out. And then we just need to bend that into position. And... Do they are they seriously not on this desk? Where the hell did those go? Man! Well, um, that's a great start. That's, this is going about as well as I expected. This might end up being a patron's exclusive at this rate. Because <laughs> it's just so damn bad that it's not worth putting on the main channel. Oh boy. Where? Like... This is the problem with having, like, tools for doing little things. Is the tools themselves are little and so they disappear. Oh well, we'll just have to use the bigger ones. This is gonna suck. Yeah, that aligns, perfect. So, I'm going to take my smaller of my two irons. At this point, I could probably go and reheat the board again, but eh. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on there. And solder. Go. Okay. That's actually going on well. Mostly because I'm pretty sure this area of the board doesn't have... Yeah. That's blobby AF, but who cares? <laughs> like, as long as the pin doesn't fall off, works, right? Might not be to any long-term endurance specs, but then again, I don't really intend to use this card very much. Okay, I should have bent that more. Really wish I had my other set of tweezers. Finally remembered what they're called. And those power connectors are getting in the way. Oops. Well, that's disgusting and horrible, but it'll work. <laughs> Actually, will that clear the heatsink? Oh, yeah, that'll clear the heatsink just fine. Um, and now we need to get the other end of that to the capacitor, and we should be gold. Up. That's actually probably part of the... Actually, yeah, that's going to be a much more substantial power plane there, or more ground there, so I'm just going to get the bigger, less accurate tip, but there's less stuff to make a mistake on, so... Yeah, ain't going anywhere.
Perfect. So that's in place now. And I'm just going to check the measurements and make sure that I am right about this. So previously this was at like 4,000 ohms to ground. So now it should be, that's 3.6 something. So yeah, about 400 ohms lower, which is what we were aiming for. Um, let me flip it over. I'm going to add all the capacitors on. I mean, yeah, it's just going to be easier to add them on the back. So with the capacitors, the plan is, um, our memory VRM is over here, and we have memory chips going all the way to there. So basically, some of the concerns I have is like, you know, extra capacitor. We're going to add a capacitor over there, over there, and one right at the output as well, just to add some extra bulk capacitance. Um, potentially, you know, well, for memory, you'd also want to add some, maybe some small multilayer ceramics, but uh, those are a pain to add, so we're just going to go with these big ones for now. Um, for those, we're going to start over there. And at this point, the board is cold, so I'm just going to heat it up. That's going to make life easier when soldering these. Um, and for how these should go on, I'm going to go ground off a display because that's an easy output to roll with and that has resistance and that has zero yeah so that's that's what I was expecting and um, yeah we're gonna put the cap this way around I'm gonna go on like that which yeah that matches. So we're just going to trim the legs a bit. Maybe a lot. There we go. Okay, we can trim them more. Perfect. So for the, all of this work, because we're all in the actual output of the VRM, that's a relatively that's generally going to be a pretty solid power plane. I like to use the really fat chisel tip instead of the slightly le well significantly less fat chisel tip. That's the other iron I have. So okay. Yeah, this, this power plane is really, really light. If you were doing this on something like a 290X, you probably wouldn't get anywhere, but this is actually really easy to work on. Well, it's blobby, but structurally sound, so. I'm going to call that a day. There we go, that's one. Looks like garbage. Wait a minute. Go, why? Nah. There, so that's our one extra 560 microfarad right on the output. The ones that this card originally came with are also 560s, but they're like this really, well, they're pretty tall, so I'm actually not sure what they'd be like in terms of specs, but. Anyway, these are probably better <laughs> um, than what was originally on the card. And then we're going to add some over here. So we have some unoccupied pads right there. Right? We have that unoccupied pads for the multilayer ceramic over there. So we're going to whack one capacitor on that. And we're going to do the same over there. Uh, over there. Also on the unoccupied pads. And I'm using the unoccupied pads instead of the, like, you could put the cap on the existing multilayer ceramic. It's just that multilayer ceramics aren't exactly structurally robust. And if, you know, that cap gets, like, knocked around, it would potentially take the multilayer ceramic off the board. And that would suck. 
Also, I just want to check that this is actually, first we're going to check that that's actually on memory. Come on. It is. And so the other end is ground. Yeah, so one end's ground. So what I'd like to do is if I'm doing a card with a lot of stuff on it, where I'm, like, I will often pre-measure all of my capacitor locations and check off which side is ground or which side is voltage, depends on the card, whatever is more convenient. Um, this one we're going to check off the ground. That's ground on that. Um, and then we're going to do up there, and then we can come back to that and solder all of them at the same time. Well, solder them all quickly. That side's voltage. That side's ground. I'm just going to check that that is actually hooked up to memory power. I don't think it's going to be hooked up to anything else, but I made that mistake on other cards before. But this is GDDR5, and this really shouldn't have any extra rails running there. So there. And now um, we're just going to put flux on. And uh, yeah, some more soldering. I'm still going to be using the big old, like the really fat chisel tip because that one's just better for this kind of work. Where, yeah, and we're going to add this one on facing away from the memory chips. And the one up in that top edge, I don't really like having things right up against the edge of the PCB, but it's not going to be too bad. Okay, so. Got that pad. Okay, we got both pads. Now we're just going to trim the legs down on this, but first we're going to bend them. So, which way? This way. Like that. We could, well, screw it. I think there's still probably enough. Okay, maybe there isn't. No such thing as too much flux. It just makes too. Uh, it just makes a bigger mess for you to clean up afterwards. So. There we go. And now the other leg. Yep. That looks relatively nice and tidy, considering that that ca type of capacitor isn't supposed to be there at all. Ugh. Let's see. Come on, focus. There. So that's that one. And now we can just do this other one up here. And yeah, that's going to be it. Now hopefully after this the card will be able to do over 1600 megahertz memory. Um, or we might be able to drop the timings down a notch and max out the memory slider or something. This edge of the PCB area is even easier to... Well, no. <laughs> I really want... Wait, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how I decide to... Oh, but I already have it bent into... Outside. Well, okay. Go. The thing is, I like to build up a little bit of extra solder on top of the pads initially, because it's easier to get the capacitor to... Grab onto the pads. So. Okay, so we got one leg and the other. And there we go. Okay, that's not going anywhere. So, there. That's our memory mod. Um, if you wanted to do this with like controllable voltage, then you'd use like a 40k ohm potentiometer and just use that to ground instead of a 
instead of just a resistor. If you wanted to have this on an on-off switch, you could just put a switch in series with the resistor. Um, but if you're like me, where it's just like, ah, oh, screw it, <laughs> if it works, it works, um, then, then you, you can go for something like this. And I'm surprised the, the lav mic hasn't managed to run out of battery yet, so that's great. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all there really is to it. Um, good rule of thumb to good rule of thumb to follow whenever you do any kind of modding is to check that you didn't create any short circuits at the end. So it's gonna put one against ground, one against the inductor, and everything's good. So I'm just gonna call that good. We're gonna turn that off. Now we just need to remount the heatsink. I'm not even gonna apply new thermal paste because <laughs> why would I? Right? It's not like we care about doing things too properly here anyway. So just gonna respread what was already on there. There we go. I'm happy with that. Looks horrendous, but whatever. It's not like this thing runs all that hot. Plug that in. The heatsink off the edge of the table. This, this is a like this is an issue I have with a lot of well a lot of heatsinks that aren't taller than two slots are actually lower than the PCIe bracket. So if you're putting the card together on a flat surface you're going to be putting stress on the PCB, which isn't necessarily the best thing to do. So that's why I like to hang cards over the edge so that, yeah, the heat sink, has, uh, the, the heat sink can be lower than the actual uh, PCIe bracket. And it doesn't cause any issues. Go, that's one. This point it'll yeah, it'll hold at this point. Two. There's the third. I mean fourth. Okay, that one's done. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> screwed up the mounting order, but hey. It's just on air cooling. So there, that's that's it, that's done. It's um, really all there is to it. At this point, it should run um, a bit better. That's assuming it scales with voltage. Um, and yeah. And unfortunately, you know, in order to show you this actually fire up, I would have had to actually set up like another camera over a test system, which I obviously didn't do because that's a lot of extra effort. So that's it. That's the end of the video. Um, you're just going to have to take my word for it that I didn't screw anything up, but I don't think I did. So there. Um, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. If you think this video is terrible, you can, you can also leave that down there. I mean, anything. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, um, then, you know, I have a Patreon, I have Teespring, there's, there, there's links to both down in the description below. They both help out with running the channel immensely. And um, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to hit the stop button now.